So in the second half of 14.5, we are investigating triple integrals in spherical coordinates. So anytime a solid region D and R3 involves either a sphere or a cone or both, we want to convert that integral to spherical coordinates. So to get us started, let's explore and define the spherical coordinate system. So in the spherical coordinate system, a point P in R3 is represented by the following ordered triplet. So we have the ordered triplet rho, theta, phi. We can alternatively write this as rho, theta, phi. And this is where rho is the distance from the origin to point P. We can think about this as the radius of the sphere. And if we think about this graphically here, you can see it's the distance from the origin to point P. So this is rho. Theta is the same angle from the positive x-axis to the radius from polar coordinates. So we know if this is the same theta from polar coordinates, this is the angle from your positive x-axis to the radius r. And so we have, again, same as polar coordinates. So in order to see angle theta, we again want to, from this point P, think about its projection into the xy plane to attain the ordered pair r theta. And we know that our radius is the distance from the origin to that point xy or r theta. And we can then consider that right triangle it creates. So here is your length y, here is the length x, creating that right angle, and we have theta is the angle from the positive x-axis to our radius. And then last but not least, we have phi, or sometimes pronounced phi. It is still debated among, amongst mathematicians to this day. So phi is the angle from the positive z-axis to rho. The angle from your positive z-axis to rho. And if we think about this graphically, so from our positive z-axis here to that angle, or to that length rho, this is the angle phi. And from here, we can see that we've created a new right triangle in the xy plane. So this length is equivalent to the radius from the xy plane. We know that this height here of z will be equivalent to this height here of z. And then we have another right angle. So we need to now go ahead and convert x, y, z, and r to spherical coordinates. So we need to convert it in terms of rho, theta, phi, and we'll use this new right triangle up here to do that conversion. Before we go ahead and convert, I want you to make note of the restrictions on these new variables. So for rho, rho is a distance. Rho is the radius of our sphere. So rho must be greater than or equal to zero. Theta is the angle from the positive x-axis, so it has the same restrictions as polar coordinates. So we know that theta is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. And last but not least, we have our new angle phi. So phi is the angle from the positive z-axis to rho, so phi is restricted to that z-axis. So it can only go as far as a line would go. 
So that means that phi is greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to pi. So these three restrictions are going to be critical to remember as we are evaluating triple integrals in spherical coordinates. So we're now ready to convert our Cartesian and polar coordinates to spherical coordinates. So we're thinking about that same spherical coordinate system that we just looked at. And to get us started, we want to think about this new right triangle in the YZ plane. And to make this easier to visualize, I've rewritten it down here so we can see our radius, our Z, and our rho as a right triangle. And so using our theta of concern here, phi, we can see that Z is the adjacent side of this right triangle. We can see that the radius is the opposite side of this right triangle, and rho is the hypotenuse. So by right triangle trig, we know that sine of phi is equal to your opposite over hypotenuse, which is the radius over rho, and we can use this to solve for the radius. We have the radius now is equal to rho times sine of phi. And again, using right triangle trig, we know that cosine of phi is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse side. So this will be z by rho. And using this to solve for z, we can now see that z is equal to rho times cosine of phi. And so this z defined as rho cosine of phi is the z conversion formula. We're going to use this radius conversion formula here with part 2 to convert x and y from polar coordinates. So to get us started, we already know from polar coordinates that x is defined as the radius multiplied by cosine of theta. And we know from polar coordinates that y is defined as r times sine of theta. So again, we are taking the radius conversion formula we just found in step 1 and we're going to substitute it into the radius from polar coordinates. So x is now equal to rho times sine of phi times cosine of theta, and y is now equal to rho times sine of phi times sine of theta. And now we have x and y in our spherical coordinates. And then last but not least here, we want to keep in mind that rho is considered the radius of the sphere. So a sphere of radius r is defined as x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to r squared. So very similarly, we can say that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to rho squared in spherical coordinates. So these are the five conversion formulas that we're going to need when integrating in spherical coordinates. So we're now ready to go ahead and define that integral. 